that in a matter of minutes, we will have Aaron Rodgers on that podium in Florham Park, New Jersey. We are about to bring you um, an historic day, if you will, in the National Football League. Aaron Rodgers, future Hall of Famer, about to play a 20th season. That's Steve Weich. I'm Andrew Siciliano. Thank you for watching NFL Now. We're presented by IKEA. Aaron Rodgers, who showed up today in Florham Park, Steve, wearing a Jets hoodie, is about to take the podium and it still almost doesn't even seem real even though we've told you about this for months it's been 42 days since he said he wants to play for the Jets but seeing him walk in this morning and hug out with Woody Johnson um odd surreal I mean if I if I'm in Green Bay if I'm a Packers fan I mean I am absolutely like gritting my teeth watching this in the in the gear and everything like that the green bay packers as we come on the air at two o'clock in the east and 11 o'clock here in los angeles just hit send on a tweet the green bay packers tweet packers trade quarterback aaron Rodgers to the new york jets so the packers have now officially announced the trade look he's already in the building wearing the jets hoodie but here it is the Green Bay Packers have traded quarterback Aaron Rodgers to the New York Jets. The Packers will receive a first-round pick, number 13, a second-round pick, number 42, and a sixth-round selection, 107, also a conditional second-round choice in 2024 in exchange for Rodgers and a first-round selection, a fifth-round choice. Packers GM Brian Gutekunst announced the transaction Wednesday. It still feels it's, yeah, I mean, it feel, look, we've, we've known this is coming, right? We know, but it's, now that it's actually happened, you see him, you know, in the gear. I mean, I was there when this happened with Brett Favre, right, when he got traded. And Favre never seemed overly comfortable uh, putting on the Jets gear or, or being in New York. It just didn't seem right. Seeing Aaron Rodgers walk in that door, he seemed quite at peace uh, right there. We'll see how he handles the New York media, but you know the Packers media is also pretty aggressive. But he's definitely um, correction. It was an 18-year career, not 19, with the Packers, and we are now taking you live. Robert Sala and Aaron Rodgers on the podium, Florham Park, New Jersey. Welcome everybody. I'm Eric Kelfan with the New York Jets. Just before we get started, uh, I wanted to go over a few particulars here. Uh, after we have some remarks. From the stage here for Mr. Johnson and Aaron, uh, we'll open up the Q&A. What we do ask is, uh, when you raise your hand, we'll call on you and you get the mic, please introduce yourself and your affiliation. Um, after the Q&A, we'll do a photo op here at the top of the stage, and then we will break down for one-on-ones. Um, so let's take on. Uh, pleasure to bring the stage, the chairman of the New York Jets, Mr. Woody Johnson. Uh, thanks, Eric. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you all doing? Really good. This is a happy day for my brother and I, for the organization here, and especially for the Jets fans all over. The fact that we're here today is really a testament to what's been going on here and what the coach and the general manager and the staff has built over the last two years. The culture that enabled us to attract somebody of the caliber that we're looking at right now, Aaron Rodgers, a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. Uh, Aaron is a tremendous player, is an understatement, and he makes everybody around him better, and we're so happy to have him. We are delighted and happy. We couldn't be happier to have him as a New York Jet. I'd just like to have a round of applause right there. Welcome to New York, Aaron. We're glad to have you. I thought you were supposed to shake my hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Christopher and Woody for bringing me here. Um, obviously, Coach Sala, Joe Douglas, my agent, Dave Dunn. Um, this is a surreal day for me. After spending 18 years in the same city, it's been a lot of uh, introductions today and meeting a lot of people, but there's a lot of excitement. Um, I'm here because I believe this. I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction uh, of Joe Douglas. Obviously, he's drafted really well the last couple of years, having the uh, offensive and defensive rookie of the year. Um, 
but big thanks to the Jets organization. Obviously, a big thanks to the Green Bay Pack organization for an incredible run. Uh, that chapter is over now, and I'm excited about the new adventure here in New York. So I'll open up to questions now. Okay. You can raise your hand. We'll get you. Right here. Hi, Aaron. Welcome. Congratulations. Tina Servasio from Fox 5 New York. So you mentioned the draft just now and you believe in the direction that Joe Douglas is taking the team. But what really attracted you to make you start thinking that the New York Jets would be the next team you would play for? Well, they smoked us last year, so I knew they had a good team. <laughs> uh, we got to practice against them a couple years ago and I got to get to know Robert a little bit more and I've always loved what he's all about. We played him in San Fran a, a few times, and mostly they got the best of us. Um, but I liked the way that he was leading, his coaching style. Um, a big reason I'm here, i got to mention, is Nathaniel Hackett, who's here. Uh, Hackett and I became really close friends for three, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, three years in, in Green Bay. And I love him like a brother. And I believe in him. And I'm... Uh, really happy to be back working with him again. Obviously, Joe has got a great track record so far of drafting some incredible players, uh, but it takes a system, and obviously Robert has the uh, the right sauce, so I'm excited about getting to work with him and Brick and uh, Mark Kwan, former teammate of mine, and uh, it's a great staff, but, you know, I'm an, old, I'm an old guy, so I want to be a part of a team that can win it all, and I believe that this is uh, a place we can get that done. Over here, Rich. Hi, Aaron. Rich Salini, ESPN. It's been about six Hi, weeks. Hey, it's been about six weeks since you said on McAfee that you wanted to play for the Jets. So I'm just curious, what was it like? This process lasted a, a pretty long time, longer than people expected. What was it like for you waiting the six weeks? And was there any point where you thought maybe that this trade would not happen? And when did you, did you know for sure that you were going to be a Jet? No, I mean, not really. I believe it was going to happen the entire time. Just a matter of, uh, I think, waiting each other out. Uh, my intention coming out of the darkness was to pursue uh, this opportunity and I enjoyed the meeting uh, with you know Woody and Christopher came out these two guys hack I may and I just got a great feel with uh, all those guys about the possibility and as I leaned into it uh, getting back into some more strenuous workouts um, I just really believe that this was where I was supposed to be um, a lot of things had to come together and I believe there was some major synchronization to make this happen. Um, but I'm excited about the opportunity here. I always believed this was uh, possible. And things moved pretty quickly on Monday, and, and thankfully I'm here now. Bruce. Aaron, Bruce Beck, NBC4 New York. Hey, Bruce. Welcome. Thank you. How driven are you to win for this fan base, which hasn't been to the playoffs since 2010, the longest stretch in professional sports for the four different leagues right now. I mean, it's, it's exciting. The Jets have an incredible, passionate fan base. I saw that last year at Lambeau. Obviously, you know about Fireman Ed and, and uh, uh, you know, his passion for the team. Uh, I think that's an exciting draw to this as well, as being a part of something special. I grew up watching old VHS tapes of, uh, of the Super Bowls, and so obviously I know about the guarantee and... and Broadway Joe, been a while since then. I noticed uh, walking in this morning that that uh, Super Bowl three trophy is looking a little lonely, so. Right. Hey, Aaron, uh, Brian Costello, New York right. Post. In your view, is this, you're here for 2023 and then we'll see what happens, or do you view this as more than a one year thing right now? Yeah, right now I'm just gonna focus on this season and uh, I'm excited about being here, I expect to be here uh, for the duration of the off season, and I'm excited to get, to get to know my new teammates and the coaching staff and the organization. And and obviously, I have a background with Coach Hackett and that offense. But um, I'm excited about just diving in and being a part of uh, this group and getting to know some of the names of uh, my teammates. And also, I'm excited about working with all you guys. I've heard a lot about the New York media, and excited to see what that's all about. Matt, uh, Matt Schneidman, The Athletic. Hi, Matt. Hi, Aaron. Um, so you obviously said with Pat and AJ that you would have liked more direct communication about moving on from you. Then Brian comes out and says, we tried to. He just didn't respond. How, 
What actually happened this offseason between the two sides that led us to where we are now? Well, I mean, I don't know if I need to really get into the specifics. Um, I will say people that know me, uh, I'm fortunate to live in a, in a beautiful house. The only downside is I have very limited cell service. So if you want to get a hold of me, I have to see your face. you got to FaceTime me. Uh, so the only response to, to the communication thing is there's, you know, records in your phone about who called you, when, FaceTime. And there wasn't any specific FaceTimes from any of those numbers that I was looking at. Um, that's neither here nor there because we're now we're at this position. Um, obviously, that's somehow, you know, what uh, the direction they wanted to go as far as they couldn't, the story, they couldn't get a hold of me, which led for this to, to be the case. My point was if, if there was a change that wanted to be made, uh, why wasn't that told to me early in the off season? Now, obviously, my future was undecided at that time. I didn't know if I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to go into my darkness retreat and, and sit with it and contemplate. Um, but when I came out, it was evident that uh, it was uh, retire or move on to a new team. Right here. Aaron, Joe Masiri, Pix11, over here. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned thinking about retirement. I believe you said at one point it was like 90%. So how much about it? was the Jets specifically and what they had to offer? Was it the Jets or retirement? And how much are you motivated by the fact that Green Bay maybe wanted to move on or was ready to move on going into this season? I mean, not really motivated by that, honestly. I, I'm, I'm very self-motivated, and I can find different ways to get that extra little inspiration all the time. Uh, it's When you get older, it's fun to, uh, to go out and prove it each year that you can still do it. And that's enough motivation, I think, that I need. Um, but this was a big draw because of the people you see on stage here, obviously Coach Hackett, um, the opportunity to be a part of a city that's hungry, that, that's a, a team of incredible fan base that's hungry to win again, uh, 12 years without the playoff, uh, not, you know, Super Bowl wins and Super Bowl three. It's been a long time. So the opportunity to be a part of something special here, uh, it's different. You know, it's similar to Green Bay in that way. When you win... In a city like Green Bay, well, I assume for a team like the New York Jets, you go down in history, and there's something special about adding that to your legacy. Justine. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Justine Anderson, CBS Hi, Justine. Sports. Hi. Good to see you. Um, you specifically said that right now you just want to focus on this season, but can you specify whether you were asked by Jets Brass for a longer investment in terms of your time, given the resources that they're giving up to get you? And then can you specify when you plan on practicing and if that is before mandatory? Uh, in the first part, there wasn't any specific uh, conversation that, I'm, that I would like to share with that. Um, again, I'm, I'm an older player, so, uh, you know, there's a lot more than just the playing part. There's the body part that comes into play. But the reason I take care of myself is to allow myself to continue to play into my 40s and I always dreamt about being a starter at 40. I'll turn 40 uh, in December of this year. Um, but I, I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future. Um, I think it's important. Obviously, I know the scheme that Hack's putting in. There's some tweaks. But I want to get to know the guys and, and uh, be around the, the facility. And obviously, you know, I haven't really spent much time in Jersey outside of Teterboro. So um, I'm, I'm going to get to know the, the area and figure out a place to live and all that stuff. And I... I want to be here to do that. So uh, there's a lot of reasons to be here. Most most importantly, just getting all the guys and put together some fun events to start that team building, which I think is really important this time of year. When you plan on practicing? Yeah. Does tomorrow count? Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll be in there tomorrow. Yeah. Just go Antoine in the back. Behind you. Hey, Aaron, Antoine Staley for the New York Daily News. How you Good. doing? Good. Uh, I just wanted to know your motivation to continue to play at this point. Obviously, you said you were 90% retired once you went to the darkness retreat. So just what motivates you at this point to just to continue to keep going at, at almost age 40? Well, it's joy. You know, you want to be having fun with what you're doing. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, then it's time to do something else. And I think the opportunity to work with Nathaniel again, to work with Robert, um, to uh, to be around Joe, to be around the Johnsons and, and the vision they have for the team. Uh, I think the excitement of a new chapter 
uh, has really been fueling my off-season workout so far and just the overall excitement level. Um, I've mentioned the Jets fans, an incredibly passionate group. I'm excited to meet them, uh, to play in front of them. Um, but to be a part of something special is what keeps you coming back. And I think this is, this is building right now. And what Coach has done the last couple of years, uh, he's building something special the right way with the right values, uh, the right type of leadership. And I think I can just fit in perfectly. I'm not here to be a savior of any kind. I'm just here to be uh, the best quarterback I can be, to lead authentically and to inspire the guys around me to raise their level of play to, uh, to an even greater, greater spot. Aaron, uh, Zach Rosenblatt with The Athletic. <clears throat> uh, you, you alluded to this before, but whenever any, somebody comes here, uh, they talk about can he handle the New York media, the market, all that stuff. I'm curious what you think about moving to a big market like this and how you think the added attention, how you think you'll be able to handle that. I'm excited about it. Uh, yeah, definitely have heard a lot about the media. You guys have a job to do. You're very good at it. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity uh, to work with you, with you all, to get to know you guys. Uh, and I've been in Green Bay for 18 years. It's a long time in a small town, and it's been great. Uh, I grew up in a small town. I think when you grow up in a tiny little town in Northern California, you dream about being in a big city. You, know, you dream about living in a big city and, you know, having places to go eat and interesting things to do. And obviously with the city being 40 minutes away, you got a lot of that stuff. But uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. And, um, Look forward to meeting you all and, and, uh, and starting a relationship. Take a couple more. Aaron, Ryan Dunleavy from the New York Post. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Uh, there's certainly a sense of deja vu here with a Packers icon coming to the Jets. I'm wondering, I don't know what your relationship is with Brett, if you guys talked at all about this and what any idea of what to expect here. And then was there any hesitation on your part uh, I guess making the same exact jump that the guy you've been compared to your whole career made. Well, he had a legendary career. Um, it is very ironic that uh, our paths have kind of taken another step in the same direction. Um, Brett and I, over the years, had talked about uh, this transition and what it was like. Um, but that was different to uh, coaching staff, uh, different GM different circumstances. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with these guys and my teammates and coaching staff. But uh, nice pictures there. Good job. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but we question. haven't talked specifically about this opportunity. Aaron, Ian O'Connor, Harper Collins. Uh, Ian? Hey, Aaron. Uh, just wondering, that there's obviously been a lot of conversation about how you can elevate the Jets, but you mentioned legacy earlier. What do you think that winning a championship for a New York franchise that hasn't won one in decades would do for your historical standing in the sport? Well, I mean, I don't really know about the historical standing in the sport. I think more from this organization standpoint, it'd be really special. Uh, there's some iconic names that have played here, probably none more iconic than number 12. Uh, and I heard what he said about unretiring his number, but to me, uh, 12 is Broadway Joe, and I didn't want to even go down that path, and I'm excited about going back to my college number. But there's something special about playing in a city uh, for a team like this uh, with a storied franchise. Uh, and, the you know, obviously going way, way back to uh, Super Bowl three to be a part of something special would uh, definitely help you go down in the history of an organization. I already have 18 years uh, in an incredibly iconic organization, and it'd be fun to be a part of the history of this one as well. Okay. Thank you, everybody. We will uh, do the photo op right now and uh, break down from one on ones. Appreciate everybody for coming. Thank you so much. Aaron Rodgers on the podium there just wrapping up an 18-minute press conference with the New York media. Joe Douglas, the GM, Robert Sala, the head coach. Rodgers pointed out that they smoked us last year when the Jets went into Green Bay and they beat Rodgers and the Packers. 
with Sauce Gardner running up the tunnel at Lambeau, wearing a cheese head, Woody Johnson, the Jets owner there, wearing the Jets cap, introducing Rodgers here at the start of the press conference from a podium off to the side, said this is a very happy day for Jets fans. A very happy day. Said that Aaron is a tremendous player, that's an understatement, and he makes everyone around him better. Rogers, Steve Weich called it a surreal day. He said he's here because he believes in the team. He believes in Robert Sala. He believes in the players Joe Douglas has drafted in the last couple of years. And he said that walking in this morning, the Super Bowl three yeah. trophy, last time the Jets won, only time the Jets have won, looks a little lonely in the lobby. Look, that's going to be the takeaway quote from this, right? That's going to be on the back page. The Super Bowl three trophy looks lonely. But the thing I really took out of this that Aaron Rodgers really, you know, really hung his, it, to me, his, his feelings on was his relationship with new Jets coordinator Nathaniel Hackett, who he worked with for three years uh, with the Packers. You know, he said he loves the man. He understands the scheme. They're very tight. They're like brothers. And that's a big reason why he is with the Jets. And so that relationship a lot's going to hinge on that, their success. You know, we saw Nathaniel Hackett go become the head coach at Denver last year. That didn't work. But people you talk to about Hackett say he's, he's an incredibly brilliant mind. And the fact that Rodgers, who's holding up that jersey number at. eight uh, right there, um, spoke so highly of Hackett, I think, is really an intriguing part of this. And real quick, on that jersey, the fact that Aaron Rodgers showed that reverence to Joe Namath, and like, I'm not even going to go down that route to wanting to wear number 12. Of course, the jersey he wore yeah, for the Packers. To me, shows a lot of respect. You know, Aaron Rodgers walking in the door, saying he doesn't want to be a savior. That To me, that's big, coming into this market and not kind of treading on any of the history, most of it dubious, but the positive history with the New York Jets and Broadway Joe, uh, to me, is a very wise opening move by Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers there with uh, the Jets jersey, number eight, with Rodgers on the back over his shoulder, exiting the podium in Florham Park. Also, you mentioned the Lombardi Trophy comment. That'll be the headline tomorrow. He said he wanted to go, here's another headline, someplace where he could win it all because he's getting older, wanted to play into his 40s. That'll happen some point later on this season in December. He said about winning it all, quote, I believe this is a place where we can get that done and that this is a place that I believe I'm supposed to be. So he said all the right things, obviously from the Green Bay perspective, and, and the Packers and the Jets hit send on their tweets, their press releases at the same time, officially announcing the trade. Um, it's just surreal to see that from the Packers announcing a trade of Aaron Rodgers. But he was pressed, because there were some members of the Green Bay media there about telling his story, the timeline as to how this went down to the offseason. Brian Gutekunst, the Packers GM, has said that there were times where he tried to get a hold of Rodgers in the offseason. He simply could not get a hold of him. Rodgers, in essence, said he has bad cell service at his house. Everyone has to FaceTime him and suggested he could show you his phone that Goody never FaceTimed. They never tried to FaceTime. Like, basically, he said he had receipts. Look, Rodgers, for the most part, stayed away from the controversy, but that's going to stir it up right there. Like, well, hey, you said you tried to reach him and couldn't get him. He says he had bad cell service, but you knew how to get him. He has receipts saying you really didn't try. Either way, this trade went down. Another big aspect of this, let's not forget, Aaron Rodgers said he's not leaving New Jersey right now. So he's going to be there to bond with his teammates. He said he wants to have some special events to try to bond with them. That's probably some off-field stuff. He said he's going to be there for off-season workouts. It is important for him to get on the same page with his teammates and for everybody to understand. So he answered that question as well. That was a big question since he didn't necessarily always do that with the Packers. He didn't have a lot of specifics as to how much he would take part in the offseason program, but he said he does plan to be in Jersey for the foreseeable future. His words, and when pressed, when will we see you actually diving in? He said he'll be on the field tomorrow. tomorrow yeah. So the so Jets offseason program continues with Aaron Rodgers on the field tomorrow wearing that number eight jersey. The Packers media department does have cell service and Wi-Fi to tweet this. Gratitude. Thank you for everything. Aaron Rodgers. It's official. It's done.